of the United Veterans Council of Santa Clara County, Oak Hill Funeral Home and Memorial Park and Dignity Memorial, I'd like to welcome you to our 100th annual Memorial Day Observance Ceremony. I'm the investigative reporter from ABC7, but most importantly, I am the father of an active duty U.S. Marine now serving overseas. And the father of an Army veteran who served in World War II, Purple Heart, Bronze Star. So it's my honor to be here today. Out of respect to all those who are remembering today and to all those in attendance, we ask you to take a moment, please, and at this time to silence your cell phones and any other electronic devices. Also, if you're holding up a sign, even though this is private property, Oak Hill Memorial invites you to do so and to honor those in your hearts, but please be mindful of those that may be seated behind you and cannot see past your signs. Now, several times today, we, you will be asked to stand as is customary during events and memorials such as this. If you are unable, though, or if you find it difficult, please remain seated. No one will be offended. We know by your presence here today that respect for our fallen is in your heart. They fought and paid the ultimate so that you may have a happy and peaceful and pain-free Memorial Day. Now, please stand for the arrival of the official party. Please remain standing for the posting of colors. Veterans and military, first responders in uniform may render a hand salute. And civilians, please place your right hand on your chest and remove your hats or covers. The color guard is provided by the United States Marines of Recruiting Station San Francisco, commanded by Major Jonathan, Major Jonathan Frerichs. March on the colors. Color bearers, advance and post your colors. Mm -hmm. 
Talk about keep walking. Take the first take the first position over there. Sergeant Carr from the U.S. Air Force. Now please welcome U.S. Army Wounded Warrior Paul Gregory for our Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Retire the colors. Please welcome Captain John Swanson, Chaplain, United States Navy, United States Coast Guard, Pacific Area, for our invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, author of liberty, you make a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. Indeed, you, O oh God, are holy and mighty. We give thanks for your unfailing presence and the daily opportunities to protect and preserve this great nation, our Constitution, and our time-honored principles. We thank you for the privilege to defend freedom and to preserve liberty and justice for all. On this Memorial Day observance, we gather before you with humble hearts and call upon your holy name, remembering and honoring those who, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, gave the last full measure of devotion. Since the inception of this great nation, you have raised up and inspired men and women of character, vision, ingenuity, and courage to defend and preserve that which we hold most dear, liberty and justice for all. In times of peace, in times of uncertainty, when the storm clouds of war gathered on the horizon and we as a nation pledged to stand against tyranny and evil, men and women from every community, including this community, answered the call to defend the cause of liberty. 
On this day, we are reminded of President Lincoln's Gettysburg Address where he said, we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Father in heaven, never allow us to become so divided that we diminish the sacrifice of those who died defending liberty. Rather, empower us to honor their memory by living selfless and honorable lives that uphold the principles for which they were willing to die. On this day, we pray for your consolation. We pray for peace in our world. And we pray that you would give us faith to believe that death does not have the final word, but that you have the final word. And we await that day when we will be reunited with those we love. Until that day, protect our nation. Protect our nation and all who serve from all evil. Continue to raise up men and women of courage, conviction, and character who gladly raise their right hand and take the oath to defend our nation from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Unto you we entrust this day and our lives. Amen. It is my honor to introduce the president of the Santa Clara United Veterans Council, Mr. Francis McVeigh, to say a few words. Thank you, and everyone may be seated. Memorial Day 2018. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm Fran McVeigh, president of the United Veterans Council and also chair of the Veterans Commission of Santa Clara County. I'd like to share a few ideas with you this morning because 2018 is an anniversary year of several anniversaries. So I'd like to mention just a few of those. It's the 150th anniversary of General Logan's order that directed that all the graves of the Civil War soldiers be honored by the placing and decoration of flowers. Hence the original name of the day as Decoration Day, May 30th, 1868. Later, it became renamed as Memorial Day and the day was moved to the last Monday of May. But there are also some other key anniversaries this year. This is the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I. At the time, it was called the Great War, and people said it was the war to end all war. Sadly, that was not the case. There have been many wars since, too many. Also, here's one that you probably are not that aware of. It is the 70th anniversary of the Women's Integration into Military Service Act of 1948. Originally, originally where women can serve was quite restricted. Not anymore. Women can have any job in the military and do. And finally, my war, Vietnam. This is the 50th anniversary of the Tet Offensive. That was one of the, 1968 was a year of great loss. It was the year of the siege of Khe Sanh as well as Tet, in which 2,800 U.S. Marines held off 44,000 NVA regulars for more than two months was great loss of life that year for the United States and many times over loss of life for our enemies. So throughout 2018 from today through our Veterans Day parade on November 11th we will remind ourselves of all those key historical dates. But we also will be remembering all who made the ultimate sacrifice from the Revolutionary War 
to today's conflicts that continue to this day. We ask each of you to pay tribute to fallen heroes. But we also want you to have fun today. You notice we have exhibits, we have hot dogs. Why do we want that? It's because one of the primary reasons that we each put on the uniform and placed ourselves in harm's way is so that families and friends of diverse backgrounds and experience can always come together in harmony and enjoy the spirit of freedom. Thank you. It is my distinct privilege to introduce Mr. Rob Wallinger, the general manager of Oak Hill Memorial Park and Funeral Home. Rob? Hello, on behalf of the management of Oak Hill Funeral Home and Memorial Park, <clears throat> I want to welcome and thank you all for attending the services here today. We're extremely proud of this day, being able to host this event for all our veterans and to have such wonderful vehicles that are on display for our, our youngsters to be able to understand what the adults uh, drove and, and uh, worked on and uh, made possible for us to defend our country. Today's celebration could not have happened without the help and dedication of several groups and people within and outside Oak Hill. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge these special people. First, the United Veterans Council for partnering with, partnering with us, and especially uh, Bob Cadillac, KD Pointier, and Gene Finucchi for their endless work. to the over 500 Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, troop leaders, parents, who came out Saturday for hours to walk through 350 acres of cemetery, placing all the flags on all the veterans, markers, and monuments here at the cemetery that they could find uh, available to place a flag at. I'd like to thank the American Legion for placing the flags along the Memorial Walk. They've been doing this for over 80 years here at Oak Hill. So we want to thank them as well. Our staff at Oak Hill, especially our superintendent, Eduardo Medina, super, uh, assistant superintendent, Russ Franklin, and our maintenance supervisor, Carlos Ramirez, and all our grounds crew for their hard work and commitment in keeping the sacred ground beautiful. Thank you to them. And I'd also like to acknowledge James Brown, who is one of our partners in this program. Unfortunately, James is not able to be with us today, but we want to acknowledge him, as well as a few others, Lily Mick and Gary Ferraro, for all their hard work, their staff members here at Oak Hill, for their dedication for making these services run the way they do today. Thank you. <laughs> Above all, thank you to all the soldiers who answered the call. In believing in what America stands for and what, what America could be. Because today we don't always we don't celebrate or remember just our Desert Storm or our Vietnam veterans. This cemetery goes back over 100 years. We have Civil War veterans here, as well as Spanish-American War veterans. And the causes that they fought and died for vary throughout the different years. But we want to make sure that we remember them and we, that we honor them for their sacrifice protecting our nation that we hold so dear. And last, God bless those who are still fighting for our freedom. I believe it's our duty and it's our responsibility to keep them in our thoughts and our prayers and honor what they give to us every day. Thank you.
At this time, I'd like to invite Mayor Sam Licardo to take the podium, backed by his city council members, who have also honored us with their support today to say a few words. Mayor? Welcome. I'm joined today by several of my colleagues, Councilmember Sergio Jimenez, Councilmember Deb Davis, Councilmember Mandiep, Councilmember Tam Nguyen, and Councilmember Johnny Camus. We're joined today with you to honor and to remember. Uh, I want to thank the United Veterans Council, uh, Fran McVeigh, Gene Finucchi, all those who worked so hard to make this day possible so that we can join together to remember. It was some seven decades ago that President Kennedy reminded us that a nation reveals itself not only by the women and men it produces, but also by those it honors, the men and women it remembers. So we gather together now some seven decades later, and we honor and remember our fallen heroes not merely because they fought bravely, but because they sacrificed nobly recognizing that they fought for something greater than themselves. Their families, our freedoms, and our collective future as a nation. And so as we are here in this cemetery, remember the words of the poet John McRae. In this field, poppies blow between the crosses, row on row. They lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved and now lie in our fields. We honor them today. Thank you for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, our keynote ad address today is by Major General Brian E. Alvin. Major General Brian E. Alvin is a distinguished military graduate of Northern Illinois University and was commissioned a second lieutenant, Chemical Corps, in May 1984. Major General Alvin's command and leadership assignments include duty at numerous locations in the U.S. and overseas during a 35-year career. He was assigned to his current position as commanding general of the 63rd Readiness Division, headquartered in Mountain View, California, in September 2016. Major General Alvin and his wife Bobette reside in McKinney, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Brian Alvin, Commanding General of the 63rd Readiness Division. General. Well, good morning, everyone. Representatives Lofgren, Eshoo, Mayor Licardo, Council Members Gwynn, Dieppe, Jimenez, Davis, Camus, Chief Garcia, Supervisors Cortese and Chavez, Sheriff Smith, Ms. Moses of the California Veteran Services. Most importantly, uh, I might add, I uh, will add, Gold Star families. If there's any here with us, God bless you and uh, thank you for joining us. The opportunity to stand before each of you today is a tremendous honor for me. Thank you. I'm humbled to be among so many veterans, community leaders, the wonderful city of San Jose, those who cherish our brothers and sisters in uniform. Your presence speaks volume, volumes of your love for our country and this great community of San Jose. Each of the patriots whom we remember on this day was first a beloved daughter, son, brother, sister, spouse, friend, and neighbor said President George H.W. Bush. We gather here today to honor and remember the heroes of our heritage. Those, as President Dwight D. Eisenhower once put it, whose constancy and courage constitute the bulwark that guards the freedom of the nation and the peace of the free world. Since the founding of our nation, more than 42 million Americans have stepped forward to serve their country in its hour of need and more than a million died so their children and ours can live in liberty. They came from every corner of America, every walk of life, each different, each an individual who made a choice. 
yet all shared the same dream of freedom that gave birth to our nation and carried the light of liberty to millions across the world. The tradition of remembrance is an old one, begun after the Civil War to commemorate the estimated 750,000 men in blue and gray who fought and died to alternately divide or preserve this great union. Known then as Decoration Day for the ceremonies across the land that decorated the graves of the fallen, it later became Memorial Day to honor the dead of every war in which Americans have fought and died defending our freedom. In 1966, a moment of remembrance was added at 3 p.m. local time all across this great country in which all activity would stop so we could remember those fallen. Still, there are those who ask, why are such ceremonies needed? Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. wrote, I see them now more than I can number as once I saw them on this earth. They are the same bright figures or their counterparts that come also before your eyes. And when I speak of those who were my brothers, the same words describe yours. On this day, when we decorate their graves, their spirits are with us. In our great democracy, Holmes said, private and general stand side by side, unmarshaled, saved by their own deeds, the army of the fallen sweep before us, wearing their wounds like stars. I speak of those I have seen, he said, but you hell have known such, you too remember, and so we do. I'd like to take a moment now to recognize and remember our Vietnam veterans this Memorial Day. 50 years ago, our service members were fighting during 21 weeks of grueling combat, known as the Tet Offensive. The sacrifices of our brothers in arms will never be forgotten. We also remember their families, spouses, children, moms, and dads who live every day with their loss and shoulder a debt we can never repay. Across the country, families, friends, service members are taking a moment, some sol solemnly, excuse me, tracing their fingers across granite memorials in remembrance, prayer, and reflection. Simultaneously around the world at this moment, a unified cadence bound in duty and honor. Our young men and women in uniform are defending us, ready 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. They possess courage, pride, dedication, selflessness, and an unrivaled commitment to duty and integrity. No one leaves our great military unchanged, and these are all the qualities needed to serve a car cause larger than oneself. Today, we face new threats to our freedom from peer and near-peer adversaries around the world who are challenging U.S. military dominance in every domain, as well as less capable states who are increasing the lethality of their forces and capabilities. They will be met with the same courage and commitment, and like the foes of times past, they too will be defeated. This is our pledge to the men and women who have gone before and our responsibility to our children and their children and all who follow. In 1945, President Henry S. Truman, excuse me, Harry S. Truman said, our debt to the heroic men and valiant women in the service of our country can never be repaid. They have earned our undying gratitude. America will never forget their sacrifices. It's as true today as it was then. So thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for remembering, and thank you for your dedication to our service members and this great nation. May God bless the fallen and their families, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. And now, America the Beautiful, sung by Ms. Angela Tirado, the voice of San Jose. Angela. Oh, beautiful. 
for spacious skies, for Majesties above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed His grace on thee. prepare for the placing of the wreaths. 150 years ago, General Order 11 was published by General John A. Logan, the third commander-in-chief of the Grand Army of the Republic. This order was the first to speak to the importance of and the spirit in which a day should be designated to honor our fallen comrades and remember their sacrifice. It states, the 30th day of May 1868 is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. At Oak Hill Memorial Park, we continue this tradition of laying floral tributes in honor of our fallen comrades. The placement of the wreaths is a testament to both the beauty and brevity of their lives. The United Veterans Council of Santa Clara County in association with Oak Hill Memorial Park honors the memory and sacrifice of all who died in the defense of their country through a fitting service and testimonials of respect. I ask that you please now stand while the wreaths of remembrance are placed and photographers please do not block the center aisle. Gold Star Mothers. During the early days of World War I, a blue star was used to represent each person, man or woman, in the military service of the United States. As the war progressed and men were killed in combat or from their wounds or disease, a gold star was substituted and superimposed upon the blue star in such a manner as to entirely cover it. The idea was to accord honor and glory to the person for his supreme sacrifice for his country. 
The Gold Star Mothers were officially established in 1928. It evolved from President Woodrow Wilson's approval for the wearing of a gold star on a black armband worn by American women for each member of a family who gave his life for the nation during the First World War. Gold Star Mother Cheryl Walsh is escorted by Donna Zalezi from the South Bay Blue Star Moms who represent sons and daughters who are currently deployed in zones of war. Medal of Honor. The Medal of Honor created in 1862 during the Civil War is the highest military decoration awarded by the United States government. It is bestowed on a member of the United States Armed Forces for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his or her life above and beyond the call of duty while engaged in an action against an enemy of the United States. Nearly 3,500 medals have been awarded and because of its nature, the medal is frequently awarded posthumously. Since the beginning of World War II, approximately 1,100 Medals of Honor have been awarded, over 650 posthumously. The first Medal of Honor was presented to Private Jacob Herod on March 25th of 1863 during the American Civil War for his actions in the Great Locomotive Chase in April of 1862. Dr. Mary E. Walker, a renowned Civil War surgeon and spy for General Sherman, is the only female recipient of the Medal of Honor. Honoring the memory and sacrifices of recipients of the Medal of Honor is Vietnam War Silver Star recipient Stephen Thompson. <laughs> Military Order of the Purple Heart. The original Purple Heart Award was instituted by George Washington in 1782 to reward troops for unusual gallantry and extraordinary fidelity and essential service during the Revolutionary War. The Purple Heart as we know it today was established, that is re-established in 1932 to coincide with the 200th anniversary of the birth of George Washington. The criteria for award of the Purple Heart states that the medal be awarded to anyone serving in the military who had received non-fatal or fatal combat-related injuries. Honoring the sacrifices of Purple Heart recipients are Vietnam War veterans Ron Wecht, U.S. Marine Corps with multiple Purple Hearts, an Army Sergeant with the 5th Special Forces, and the recipient of a Bronze Star and Purple Heart, Lynn Malaznik. Prisoner of War Missing in Action. Since World War I, over 142,000 Americans were captured during wars or conflicts. Over 125,000 prisoners of war have been repatriated. 17,000 died while being a POW. The fate of more than 88,000 Americans listed as unaccounted for or missing in action since the First World War remains unknown. Honoring those who suffered as a POW or remain unaccounted for are former prisoners of war in Vietnam, Joseph Tran and Kang Kim Dong. The American Civil War was the most horrific war in the history of the United States. It pitted brother against brother and cousin against cousin and resulted in over 1.1 million casualties, 3.5% of the population of the country at that time. Over 750,000 Americans, both North and South, lost their lives on the battlefields. That is more fatalities in all wars that the United States has been involved in from the Revolutionary War until the war in Vietnam, when the total combined deaths finally exceeded that number. Veterans of the Civil War are represented here today by the commander of the Sons of Union Veterans, Phil Sheridan Camp No. 4, William Pope, and his wife, Sharon Pope, past president of the Dr. Mary E. Walker Auxiliary 52. 
San Jose's Phil Sheridan camp was established in 1897 and is composed of descendants of Union Civil War veterans. They have been honoring their ancestors, many of whom are buried here at Oak Hill on Memorial Day for the past 121 years. There are over 500 Union Civil War veterans buried here at Oak Hill. The Spanish-American War was a conflict between Spain and the United States between April to August of 1898 and involved 260,000 Americans. The war ended after quick, decisive naval and military victories for the United States in Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines. The total number of Americans killed in the war was 3,289. If you add the number killed with the sinking of the battleship USS Maine in Havana, Cuba, which precipitated the war, a total of 3,549 Americans lost their lives during the four-month war. Veterans of the Spanish-American War of 1898 are also buried here at Oak Hill. Honoring the memory and sacrifices of the veterans of the Spanish-American War with the placement of a wreath are Tad Campbell and Paul Labrachef, representing the sons of the United Spanish-American War veterans. World War I, 4.7 million Americans served in the U.S. Armed Forces during World War I, and 117,000 gave the ultimate sacrifice during the war to end all wars that ended on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. Honoring the memory and sacrifices of those who fought and died in the Great War are members of the Welcome Home Doughboys, Marty Leto and David Leto. War II. Of the 16.4 million Americans who served during the Second World War, over 407,000 of the greatest generation gave their lives for the freedoms we have today. World War II veterans are dying today at a rate of about 1,100 a day. Honoring the memory and sacrifices of those who gave their lives for the country between 1941 and 1945, with the placement of a wreath are two Monford Point Marines. In 1942, President Roosevelt established a presidential directive giving African Americans an opportunity to be recruited into the Marine Corps. These African Americans from all states were not sent to the traditional boot camps of Paris Island, South Carolina, and San Diego, California. Instead, African American Marines were segregated, experiencing basic training at Montford Point, a facility at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Approximately 20,000 African American recruits received training at Montford Point Camp, less than 10% of the Marine Corps end strength during World War II. The initial intent was to discharge these African American Marines after the war, but in July of 1948, President Harry S. Truman issued Executive Order 9981 negating segregation. In September of 1949, Montford Marine Camp was deactivated, ending seven years of segregation. On April 19, 1974, Montford Point Camp was renamed Camp Johnson in honor of the late Sergeant Major Gilbert H. Hashmark Johnson. Johnson was one of the first African Americans to join the Corps, a distinguished Montford Point drill instructor and a veteran of World War II and Korea. The camp remains the only Marine Corps installation named in honor of an African American. Now carrying the wreaths are World War II Marine Corps veteran, the Reverend Wortham Fears, and retired U.S. Marine Corps Staff Sergeant Larry E. Michael Johnson, the Vice President of the West Region of the Montford Point Marine Association, and also the son of the notable Sergeant Major Hashmark Johnson. War, sometimes known as the Forgotten War, cost the lives of over 36,500 Americans between June 1950 and July 1953. Honoring the memory and sacrifices of those who gave their lives for their country during the Korean War is Wally Johnson, U.S. Army Korean War veteran.
the Vietnam War. The American involvement in the war in Vietnam began in 1961 when special advisors were sent to South Vietnam. The official end of the Vietnam era was April 30th, 1975, when the last Americans departed Saigon. 58,226 Americans died in the war, or are listed as missing in action during the 14 years of conflict. Honoring the memory and sacrifices of those who served during the Vietnam War are members of Darwin J. Thomas Memorial Chapter 201 of the Vietnam Veterans of America. Chapter 201 is named in honor of Naval Aviator Ensign Darwin J. Thomas from Santa Clara, who was shot down over North Vietnam in 1966. His remains have yet to be recovered. Placing the wreath for those who gave their lives for the country during the war in Vietnam are U.S. Army veteran Warren Finch, Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 201 President, and U.S. Air Force veteran Rose Herrera, Chapter 201 Director. Persian Gulf War. The first major conflict involved the United States since Vietnam proved to be a catharsis of sorts for the American military, just as the Spanish-American War gave the nation a short victorious war following the angst of the Civil War. The Gulf War lifted the U.S. out of a self-conscious post-Vietnam malaise. Between August of 1990 and March of 1991, of the 430,000 Americans who served during the Persian Gulf War, 294 lost their lives through all causes. Honoring the memory and sacrifices of those who gave their lives for their country during the Persian Gulf War is retired Army nurse and veteran of the Gulf War, Ellen Ducharme, and retired Army Major Sergeant Earl Brown. Afghanistan and the Iraq War. The war in Afghanistan, the uh, first major conflict of the 21st century, began in response to the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks on the United States. The war in Afghanistan began on October 7, 2001 and led to the fall of Kabul on November 13, 2001. Over 2,400 Americans have lost their lives in Afghanistan. On March 19th of 2003, American and British forces began Operation Iraqi Freedom, a conflict that may become known as Gulf War II or the Second Iraq War. Approximately 4,500 Americans have lost their lives in combat in Iraq. Honoring the memory and sacrifices of those who gave their lives for their country during the Afghanistan and Iraq wars are veterans of those wars. Colonel Dean Winslow, MD, U.S. Air Force retired, Stanford Medical Center, and Palo Alto VA, and Colonel Sig Lokensgaard, U.S. Air Force Commander, 129th Maintenance Group. Colonel Winslow was also recently nominated by the President of the United States to serve as the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Health Affairs, but withdrew his name from consideration after the confirmation hearings were delayed. Day tribute. In 1868, the third Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, or GAR, General John A. Logan, published General Order No. 11 that specifically set aside the 30th of May as the day to honor the sacrifices of the soldiers and sailors who saved the Union and died in defense of the country during the Civil War. Around 1900, the 30th of May was officially recognized as Decoration Day the day to honor the memory and sacrifices of all those who gave their lives in the defense of the country in all wars. After World War II, Decoration Day became Memorial Day. In 1971, it was set for the last Monday in May by the National Holiday Act of 1971. In tribute to the original Decoration Day, Sons of Union Veterans and its auxiliary members Robert Cadlick and Amelia Campbell are placing a bouquet of flowers. Now, Robert portrays Civil War veteran and members of San Jose Sheridan Dix Post No. 7 of the Grand Army of the Republic, Charles L. Burdick. Burdick is buried in the GAR section here at Oak Hill.
Now please be seated. We will now have a memorial music selection by the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Pipes and Drums. stand and place your hand over your heart during the honors by the rifle squad performed by the United States Marines of the 23rd Marine Regiment headquartered in San Bruno, California, followed by the playing of taps by a bugler attached to Marine Corps League Detachment 10, San Francisco, California.
We will now raise the flag and rejoice in the beauty of the red, white, and blue. Raising the flag today will be Sergeant Lynn Belaznik, U.S. Army veteran. And please be seated. I'd like to welcome Congress Member Zoe Lofgren and Congress Member Anna Eshoo for some proclamations. Congress Members. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor, it's a privilege to join with all of you as we remember those who have given their all to our nation. Uh, Congresswoman Lofgren and I had the privilege of having a flag flown over the Capitol of the United States of America to be presented to the Veterans Council of Santa Clara County uh, in appreciation for all they do on behalf of all who, uh, who have served and those who gave their lives to our country. Thank you, everyone. It's a blessing to be here with you. I also have a, a proclamation. You know, every day that the Congress of the United States is in session, a permanent record is made of everything that's said and done. In a way, it's kind of like the diary for America. And we have Anna Eshoo and I uh, placed in the congressional record uh, just recently a recognition of the United uh, Veterans Council because this is the 100th annual Memorial Day service that they have hosted. And we think that is something that everyone in America ought to know about. I'm honored to be here with all of you as we remember those who gave their lives so that we could live free. Let's honor their memory today and every day by standing up for what they fought for, a free country under the Constitution through the rule of law. Thank you very much for allowing us to be with you today. Also, I'd like to bring up um, Supervisor Dave Cortese and uh, County Supervisor Cindy Chavez for a proclamation as well. Thank you. And for those of you in the hot sun, we will be brief. I do want to um, make sure to acknowledge the United Veterans Council of Santa Clara County, um, the committee, the organization itself, the people that do the hard work, and kind of an unsung hero. Um, a woman who makes sure that we're all here every year, and I mean all of us, and that is Adele Button Bell for, um, for doing what she does every year. I, I've walked away from this event too many times over the years without uh, having uh, given her an acknowledgement, so thank you, Adele. Uh, another person that it, it really deserves an acknowledgement, I think beyond even the great applause that he received a little while ago is uh, from Oak Hill here, Rob Wallinger. Just a few weeks ago, Supervisor Chavez and I were honored to, to be here to speak. 
um, as we unveil the Gold Star Memorial here uh, at Oak Hill. That could not have been done, of course, without Oak Hill dedicating that very valuable Silicon Valley real estate in perpetuity to the Gold Star Memorial. Um, that movement, uh, which, has, uh, which is part of a nationwide tribute to Gold Star families who've lost loved ones serving in the military, was launched by Herschel Woody Williams, a U.S. Marine Corps veteran who served in World War II. There are now 34 monuments installed and 43 others underway in the United States. Uh, and of course, even at that, uh, there's nothing, nothing we can do to repay the debt that we owe to those families and their children. Um, let's give them all another round of applause, please. <laughs> Supervisor Chavez and I and the Board of Supervisors uh, were proud to raise the money uh, for that monument and we'll continue to support the maintenance of it over the years. Another thing that I want to want all of you to know that the Board of Supervisors has not forgotten nor has the City of San Jose and Mayor Licardo and that is uh, what we refer to as our houseless veterans. Uh, veterans whose, whose home is Santa Clara County but come back from active duty without a roof over their head. And through a program called All the Way Home, uh, launched by Mayor Licardo, myself, and the entire Board of Supervisors, including our current Vice President, Supervisor Cindy Chavez, we have, over the last few years, housed 1,000 plus uh, veterans, and we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going until we no longer have the shame of having veterans in this county living under overpasses or in creek corridors. Thank you so much, all of you who support the, the tax measures that make those kind of activities happen. And before we present to the United Veterans Council of Santa Clara County, um, this proclamation on behalf of the entire Board of Supervisors, I want our Vice President, Supervisor Cindy Chavez, um, to say a few words. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you who come out and celebrate this every year. It gets more and more beautiful, and the organizers just did a lovely job acknowledging uh, the commitment of, of people who've died in honor of today. So let's give another round of applause for all the organizers. This really wouldn't happen without them. And let's invite up Fran McVeigh to get our commendation. Thank you very much. I'd like to acknowledge now, in closing, Major General Alvin and guests, Oak Hill Funeral Home and Memorial Park, United Veteran Council of Santa Clara, the U.S. Air Force, Staff Sergeant Linda Carr, a wonderful job, United States Marine Corps, United States Navy, United States Coast Guard, United States Air Force, United States Army, Captain John Swanson, Wounded Warrior Paul Gregory, Sergeant Lynn Melaznik, First Sergeant Alan Ladonero, and the Marines of the 23rd Marine Regiment. Major Jonathan Frerichs and the recruiting station San Francisco. Congress member Zoe Lofgren, Congress member Anna Eschew, Board of Supervisors Dave Cortese, Mike Wasserman, Cindy Chavez, Tam Wynn, Sergio Jimenez, Deb Davis, Lan Dieppe, Johnny Camus, Mark Berman, Mayor Sam Licardo, Sheriff Lori Smith, San Jose Police Chief Eddie Garcia, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Winokur, Captain Bonilla, Sergeant Major Javier Lozano, Colonel Dean Winslow, Colonel Sig Lokensgard, Marion Moses, Director of Cal Bet Center. Now, before we close at this time, the chaplain, Captain uh, Swanson, will grace us with his benediction, followed by God Bless America by Miss Angela Torado. But before completing those next couple of tasks, which will conclude our event, I would like to invite you all to please stay for barbecued hot dogs and refreshments, visiting the vendor and resource booths and other events taking place on the ground, such as a Vietnam War Remembrance and more. I'd now like to invite Chaplain Swanson back up for the benediction. I invite you to join me in just a short word of prayer. Almighty God, we offer heartfelt thanks for the courageous men and women whose sacrifices throughout our nation's history have made freedom our most costly and precious legacy. 
for those who have dedicated their lives to the preservation of freedom, and especially those now serving in harm's way, we give thanks. Protect them and their loved ones, and upon completion of their mission, deliver them home safely home again. World events daily remind us that the future is anything but certain. In the face of uncertainty and danger, help us to always remember that while we do not know what the future holds, you, O oh God, hold the future. Grant us faith to entrust our lives to you, that we may face each day with confidence, knowing we are not alone. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain, for that beautiful blessing. And now, once again, Sergeant Carr. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night. The light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans, wide with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day, and thank you for coming.